Yay Networks. Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I'm your host, Sybil Amuti, and I can't wait for you to hear all of the Great Girlfriend magic on today's show. So without further ado, grab something great to drink, grab your pen and your paper, and get ready for this week's episode. Enjoy! Happy Wednesday, great girlfriends. We're in for another round of the podcast. And boy, am I happy. First of all, this is the first time ever in the history of a seven-year show. Oh, my gosh. Seven years. Wow. That I've had a guest say, can we pray before we begin our episode? History. So you've already come in the building making history. (laughs) (laughs) And and what a beautiful prayer it was. It was so sincere. You said something so aligned with heaven, I have to acknowledge it. I, I, you, before great girlfriends, before you even know who she is, you'll know her heartbeat. But mm. you said a voice of hope, and that is like always my prayer. Like God, may mm. I, through what I do, be a vessel for hope for, in someone's life. Yeah, hope is it. And That's I it. and in in a brand in brands, and I talk mm. about this all the time. Great girlfriends, that I think we're all in the business of hope. Yeah, like if people can understand the power of hope. Even as we sit in these chairs, we literally hope mm-hmm. that they're going to hold us. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> we are hoping. We're and trust. Like, yeah, we're trusting Believe. and believing like that this is going to do the job. So <laughs> I want to thank you for being open to that. And with that being said, I want to welcome you for the first oh. time. I already know this is not going to be the last time, but this is definitely the first time that I'm having on um, my hand-selected guest, Kristen dalton Wolf. Oh, hi, Kristen. Hi. I'm so happy to have you. I'm so I'm so happy to be here. Thanks There's, for giving me a reason to leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I was like, okay, as I read over the bio, and Great Girlfriends, I'm talking such a robust bio. When you learn more about her as a best-selling author, as a board-certified mental health and professional life coach, as the founder of She Gathers Ministries, as a print commercial TV host. How awkward is it me reading this while you're it's, looking at it's me? It's hilarious. Awkward. But just let it, let it flow. Let it flow. Because yeah. so, this is all inside of her. As a former Miss USA, <laughs> as a mother of three kids and married 10 years and I just want to be clear great girlfriends we're talking a five a three and a one-year-old mm-hmm. yes. and you are in here looking like fresh like the morning dew like. <laughs> <laughs> well thanks I mean you said I was a former Miss USA and it's kind of there's like this phrase that's like you can take the girl out of the pageant but you uh, can't take the pageant out of the girl just uh-huh, like just like you uh-huh. can't take the southern out of the girl Facts. you know once she moves out of the south but I just feel like once you're kind of in in even not even outside of pageants, but in the performing entertainment world, once yeah. you're like in that space, you yeah, you just can't let yourself go. Like it's, it's not allowed. It's you true. know. <laughs> and there's something about the lights when the lights and the cameras mm-hmm. hit. It's something that reminds you to be alive. It sort of yeah. awakens a piece of you. Mm-hmm. And you came in. You're like, hi everyone. I was <laughs> like, oh hey, <laughs> studio <laughs> lights, camera action. Let's go. <laughs> This is where I thrive. <laughs> I love it. So, okay. There's so much I want to know about you. But again, you were someone that came highly recommended as a guest because when I moved here to L.A. a year and a half ago, I was like, so how are women doing community out here? And mm. I really wanted to know as a Christian woman um, and someone who's very intentional about my time and the people that I'm around and just I just want to always be in the right mix or be at home. That, that's my rule. I mean, yes. it's got to be quality oh, or I will be at home where there's plenty of quality. So, um, but I was always, I'm always asking that question, like, and how are Christian women doing community and what, mm-hmm. like, where, where's mm-hmm. the quality? And a friend of mine goes, oh, there's this woman and oh. you have to follow her. She's in LA. She's got this great story and you're going to want to know more about her. And I was like, so deeply, you know, pro- I don't know how many pictures in, I was like, oh, look at that bright spirit. <laughs> Look, look at that joy. Look at Thanks. that love. I'm glad that's what you saw. That's, <laughs> all of that. I love that. All yeah. of that without a filter. It was, mm. it's a light. And so um, I told myself that once we became in studio uh, recording live in LA, shout out to Riley and Casey, who's in studio. Hey, Yay. y'all. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it would be super special to get you on as one of my first studio guests. So I want to tell you the first to pray, seven years of a show, and you're the first one to oh. offer prayer. Hmm. And you are the second, third, that's not true. You're the third in studio guest. So you're ah! one of the first. Yay! Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love like a beautiful on-camera podcast yeah, interview because yeah. then it's like, 
like a talk show. It's like a talk yes. show. So I wanted to get get to know a little bit about you and great girlfriends. You're probably Googling or you're probably on Instagram, Kristen Dalton Wolf. But I want to know a few things about you. And these questions will tell me a little bit about who you are. And we'll jump right into our episode. All right. So, Kristen, you're at a light and it turns yellow. Do you stop or do you go? Go. My kind of girl. You know, my husband stops at like a green progressing to yellow. Oh, he is that nice. sweet at heart. I'm like, go. He's like, yeah, no, I'm just going to stop here. There yeah. could be a dog or I'm like, it's not a dog. Aww. Go. Not that man. He stops yeah. and he wait. And my kids are in the back like, are you serious? <laughs> like, mommy, he's not. I'm like, I know. I know. We'll do it. We'll deal with it later. All right. It's late and you're hungry. What are you eating? Cheese and crackers with truffle almond. Oh, Yeah, I kind of make myself like a... um. Like a little, little cheese box. board situation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Late night charcuterie. And it's like the Rosemary Asiago cheese from Trader Joe's. Mm. Mm-hmm. Or the New Zealand grass-fed cheddar. Oh, come on. They're all affordable. It sounds super expensive, but it's like $3.14. Really? Uh-huh. On salted pretzels. Oh, salted pretzels on the move. Oh, yeah, my gosh. They are the move. And then you put the truffle <laughs> almond on top, and you're just like, why would I ever go to an expensive restaurant? That is such yeah. a good tip. Add a dried blueberry. Wait, no. yeah. With like just just one, like put it on top, or, or just a like, couple. It depends on how small they are. I love that. It's so good because that sweet, salty, mm-hmm. and kind of but like, like a delectable. Tangy. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't taste like bleh, like I'm eating gross late night snacks. It's it tastes kind of fancy, it's decadent. Yeah, yeah. Even like though it's a that. lot of calories, but it's okay because it, <laughs> we need fat. We need fat. And almonds are protein. So. And almonds are protein. And why not? <laughs> you might wake up a little swole. <laughs> but drink a lot of water. And, and you Those little eye masks and it's all worth it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's totally worth it. I love that. I love that. Okay. What's the last show that you watched on television? Um, Emily in Paris. Oh, how yeah. was Emily in Paris? I didn't. I have not seen it yet. Oh my it's gosh, my, it's, it's adorable. My list forever. Okay. It's so cute. I'm okay. on. I'm on episode five, and lately I've been going to sleep at eight thirty, um, because I'm so tired at the end of the day with my children and work and everything. Yeah. Um, but if I have a little bit of energy, if they're down by seven, I'll pop a bowl of popcorn and sit down and watch an episode of Emily in Paris. It's like thirty oh. minutes, just very lighthearted, and yeah. the the main character is very hope. Very hopeful. There's not, there's not like, she goes through hard things, but her attitude is mm-hmm. so optimistic and it's so inspiring to me just mm-hmm. in dealing with pettiness and mm-hmm. everyday like people interactions that are difficult. Mm-hmm. She always keeps a smile on her face and is positive. And I'm like, oh, I want to be more like that. Oh, I'd like that. Yeah. Okay. I can use it at the end of it because I don't have the kind of time to like do four hours of a show or uh-uh. any of that kind of, I need like a mm-hmm. quick yet effective show. Right. Okay, and it's so like Emily good for it. It's, it's, a, it's good for your mental health before yeah. you go to sleep. Like you don't yeah. want to watch dark stuff That's before so you go true. to sleep. I watch crime. <laughs> I like Dateline. It's oh, so bad. You, I know. I know. Before you go to sleep. Inappropriate. I know, hurt? and I'm tossing. I'm How like, is that for your dream that, life? Well, you know Psyche. what? I use yeah. brainwaves at night. So okay. I listen to, uh, I do chronotherapy, or I listen to brainwaves, oh. delta waves. Yeah, my delta waves at mm-hmm. night, and it helps me sleep. And and I, I don't dream. Oh, I used to be a aggressive <gasps> dreamer. Me too. If this whole day would be in my dreams later, except you'd be a monster. Casey oh. would have, like, five heads, and Riley have a knife. Like, it would be chaotic. Okay. Now? It's peaceful. Is this Brainwaves like on Amazon Music or where do you I, I get this? on Spotify, Brainwaves. There's also an app. I'm going to yep. have you send me the yep. link. Yep, yep. Because it's I need to eliminate little, my dream life. It's it will, very exhausting. And the quality of your sleep changes <laughs> four or five hours and you feel like you've gotten like eight hours. I promise you. You wake up like, wow. Okay, I feel like if no one leaves, it, like if that. no one leaves with any other gold nugget today <laughs> like they just got it right now it's like brain waves everyone it's a move and you can do like time it for like 30 minutes and it's out but but i need to stop watching dateline period because my kids are like mommy are we okay i'm like we're fine it's just a thing um who was the last person you text and why oh uh the, okay the last person i text right before i walked in was my friend kirsten because uh-huh. she had sent me a long voice note okay. in response to a check-in text <laughs> that i sent five days ago Ah! And um, she's like, I'm alive. I'm alive. No, like I wrote her. She vo- voiced me back and I didn't respond oh, to the check in oh. her response. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I can't see when people do that to me. I'm like, don't act like you don't care if you're not going to listen to what I wrote. Right. So right. um, 
Anyway, so I, f- I was sitting in the parking garage before I came in and listened to about four voice notes of <laughs> different people. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. so I just responded back to her, Aww. letting her know that I, I did listen. I do care. Oh, I'm I sorry for that. the delay. Yeah. yeah. And, and the check-ins are so important. I love that. Okay, so who's your favorite human? Oh, my husband is the first one who popped okay, in my head. Okay, hubby. So we'll go with that. Ooh, yeah, he's pretty special. I mm-hmm. love it. Yeah. Favorite time of year? Christmas. Mm. I know, so cheesy, but it's also my birthday month, and it's oh, always nice. twinkling lights yeah. and, like, cozy hot chocolates and yeah. beautiful everywhere. Yeah, yes. people are just so kind and loving yeah. during the Christmas holidays, too. Yeah. And your favorite book of all times is probably, like, a trick question, but just go for it. Mm. Well, finally, I'm having a Danielle Steele novel pop into my head. Wow. I know. Danielle Steele. Oh, the uh, what's, oh, Zoya is the name oh. of it. Zoya. And it's really a, a take on um, Anastasia Romanoff's life mm. as if she actually lived. Right. Yeah. I have not heard Danielle Steele's name oh. in so long. So <laughs> I love that we brought up a Danielle Steele novel. I mean, I, I'm like a personal development psychology, like faith junkie. That's all I read. But yeah. like when you said favorite book of all time, I'm like, gosh, it's yeah. back to the high school days of the beautiful yeah. romance fiction, like I wonder, yeah. you know, all yeah. that. I should oh, probably, I, love that. I should read one again. I just had a friend encourage me. She's like, you really want to grow. You need to read fiction not nonfiction. Mm-hmm. so I thought that was so that's that an interesting good. take on that I love that and so inside of all of that we've learned a lot about who you are but there is this mm-hmm. other masterpiece to what you said which is that you are a professional life coach mm-hmm. and a community builder and so that is such a big piece of our great girlfriend community is talking about creating these connections that are meaningful that are intentional and an impactful space I love that you, being from North Carolina, are now living here in Los Angeles and have curated a space uh, where women can come and gather on a mission, right? I feel like it's so intentional. I want you to tell us a little bit about how you became a community builder Mm. and what was your purpose when you set out to, like, build a collective of women? Mm. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, It's funny, too, because when I'm in church and I hear the word community, I feel triggered. Mm. Um, because a, I'm an introvert, and what? Oh yeah. Oh, so I feel special. And b, I, feel loved. <laughs> <laughs> I love people, uh-huh, uh-huh. but I don't like forced connection. Oh, amen. and and it does feel like that at church sometimes, like with the high fives and the gr- yeah. big greeting team, and when they tell you to like go make friends, and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that's what you have to go do right now. Like I do not like that. You know, the five minute interaction. We're like, yep. we're gonna put two minutes on the clock for you to like shake your it. neighbor's hand. I'm like, oh my yeah. god, I'm going to the bathroom. Yeah. You know, I want to make friends on my own terms. So it's just funny, like, to hear myself described as a community builder um, because I don't super love that word. But I also that's that also is what I'm doing. And a big part of that just came from my own my own struggles in finding that um, and feeling like I really belonged in the church churches that I grew up in and the Mm. Christian communities that I grew up in. where Christianity is a more of a culture mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. a status thing mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, social circle thing. Yep. Um, and there's cliques. Yep. And I watched my mom be excluded mm-hmm. and I watched her feelings be her and I'm very protective of her, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like I, I was just always trying to figure out, like, how do you um, how do you make people like you, number one? Mm-hmm. And how do you really make friends but not in a way where it feels like cheesy you know like group think uh like sorority mentality not that there's anything wrong with sororities but you know in that sense that it just feels like um doesn't feel genuine it's forced yeah 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 it's like i've given you a set of women i've given you 20 women and you have to make friends in this set 20 and you're like what if i don't feel the word you said was Mm. belonging what Mm. if i don't feel like i belong yeah in this set what do i do yeah Mm -hmm. so belonging is a big piece of building a community that matters and i love that word a sense having a sense of belonging is a place where you feel accepted you might feel challenged you feel charged mm. um, and you feel you feel appreciated. Mm-hmm. You feel seen. Yeah. You know, it's almost like you're holding your mirror to yourself in terms of character yeah. more than some of the other superficial things that can come up in certain types of community. Mm-hmm. I love that. So in you saying, OK, 
I want to build this in L.A., which is now I don't think this about L.A. And uh, L.A., you're listening. Please know that this is not my heart. <laughs> However, this has been said about L.A. The stereotype. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that it is one of the most superficial cities of mm. all time and you know, around the world. But you wanted to build something with value and substance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it from a void or was it just the thing that you're like, this is part of who I am? It came out of my own personal story when I encountered women my own age for the first time in my life uh, who spoke life into me mm -hmm. and called out the beauty and the gold because for so long I was kind of used to feeling like I needed to downplay myself to make other people mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Yep. Um, so I wasn't like a target, mm -hmm. you know, or, or so mm -hmm. other people weren't like jealous of me or so I did belong, you mm -hmm. know, and so um, my husband took me up to Bethel mm -hmm. in Redding, California, and um, I walked into the church, mm -hmm. and as I walked in, this, like, group of four to five girls, like, came up to me and surrounded me, and they just started prophesying over me, and I didn't know anything about, like, the gifts of prophecy or, like, anything like that at the time, yeah. but really what it is is life speaking. It's just right. edifying and uplifting you and who God says that you are, and I had never experienced that, and I was, like hot with the Holy Spirit presence and I never felt or experienced the Holy Spirit before mm. I was totally changed with like wow like girls who are my age who are my peers who I've often felt so rejected by are not only like accepting me but encouraging me and calling out destiny and purpose and identity mm -hmm. and because that changed me so much I was like I want to do this for other people I want to replicate this experience on a regular basis in Los Angeles. And like you mm -hmm. said, there's a stereotype that people in Los Angeles are so superficial, but actually the people who move here have so much depth yeah. and yeah. genuineness yep. and are hungry for the truth yeah, and for wholeness yeah. and healing. And so it was really not that hard. Wow. You know? Yeah. And so I just, um, I started a weekly women's group in my house and oh, wow. Uh, so did you post online or did you call a few friends? Is Kirsten like, hey, girl, let's let's. <laughs> yeah, let's it started out. Together. Yeah, it started out with uh, maybe like five girls mm -hmm. and then it grew from there. Mm -hmm. uh, then we did an annual women or we did a women's retreat where we invited more girls. And after that, they were all like, can we come to your weekly group? But I didn't have enough space. Yeah. And so we're like, OK, how do we do this? And so we eventually um, turned into a monthly format. Mm -hmm. It's called She Gathers. And it. so it's a teaching ministry where I'm leading mentorship and meditations and then women are connecting. And um, I really want to help them develop as leaders so they mm -hmm. can replicate the same thing and do it in their house mm -hmm. or have their own small group mm -hmm. and impact people. And maybe it's not even in a small group, but just, oh my gosh, on a daily basis where we're meeting people on set or in the grocery yeah. store or wherever we're meeting them. Yeah. Um, but it's a place to just grow and be transformed um, for women who are purpose minded and want to become who God has called them to be. Yeah. You know what I think is so interesting is a lot of times people are looking for these big moments where they meet people. I am going to go to this experience and I am going to meet all of these amazing women. But I have found myself in the grocery store picking fruit mm. and run into genuine, authentic people whose hearts are just open. And what I've realized is that life offers us all of these beautiful moments. They're not the big moments. The big moments are just a reflection of the micro moments that we take advantage of mm. to be kindness, to be love, to show connection, to show or to offer belonging to yeah. someone who could use a hug, could mm -hmm. use warmth or could mm -hmm. use strength or whatever it is we have to exchange. Yeah. So I'm wondering from you, um, as you start to build out the DNA of like your community, if she gathers, mm. what are some of the things that you were like, this is mandatory. This, this is part of the DNA of this culture mm. that this, that you will experience this when you enter, mm. she gathers. You'll experience warmth. Mm -hmm. um, you'll experience women who have done a lot of transformative work mm -hmm. and are contemplative and are pretty secure in their identities um, as God's daughter and because of that they're comfortable outpouring mm, and pouring yeah. into you yeah um, 
think a lot of times when you're in a room full of insecure people, it breeds insecurity. Facts. But when you walk into a room full of women who are really flourishing and overflowing with their relationship with God, then they are responding out of that to love mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. be warm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so true. I think in certain spaces it can be so fluid and in other spaces it can be quite contrived where you're like, Woo! This is forced. This yeah. is like <laughs> Yeah. And I think there are probably some of those moments. Yeah. Um, like upon arri arrivals are always a little like, ah, because there's yeah, new people. people have to test and, the temp and they're like, yep. what's, yeah, what's yes, this going to be? Definitely. Yeah. But then after is where the, the good mingling and, and connections are always really like vibey and yeah. buzzy. Yeah. Yeah. There's someone listening, Kristen, who's probably saying, I don't know the first steps. They heard you say that you're an introvert and mm -hmm. they don't believe it. They're watching oh. you and they're like, yeah, right. There is no way with all that energy and zest that mm. you are an introvert. And so they're probably wondering, you know, with that type of, uh, you know, with, with whatever insecurities they're holding and yet still having desire to have community, they're trying to figure out how to make that happen. Yeah. What would you say to a woman who is in that space where she is feeling slightly inferior Mm. you know, but wants to build bridges to women who can help her get to the other side? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Uh, well, first, I, I want to acknowledge the introvert thing. You can be an introvert and have excellent social skills. Say it again. <laughs> say, say it again and say it loud. You can be an introvert and have excellent social skills. Yes, you can. And you can love people. Yes. Um, Being an introvert doesn't mean that you're shy or you're scared. It means that you you get your energy from being alone. Absolutely. And so my husband and I were just talking about this last night. We were talking about how, for me, our house and my our home is my personal haven. That's where I go to breathe. It's private for me. Yeah. Whereas for him, he's an extrovert. So for him, our house and our home is like, everyone come in. Like, yeah. there's no, like, he doesn't need safety. Uh -huh. For me, I'm like, get away, you know? Right, like, right. I'm going to have to go in the closet and shut the door if there's people here. Yeah. Um, past a certain time, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I need a heart out. Yes. So, um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's just the first thing. I think it's important for people who identify as an introvert to know that, like, that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It just yeah. means that you need, you have uh, time frames on how long your your light or your energy can stay on. And then when you notice that light switch go off, you need to honor it and just get out. out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, uh, and then as far as like, okay, so if I'm not super like social extroverted, yay, just love superficial, surfacey hangout time, because that is me, I cannot stand small talk, mm -hmm. um, then be intentional about the space that you do get involved in. So for me, it, it was joining a Bible study. Um, because I knew that the conversation was going to be focused yeah, and it was going to be purposeful and meaningful. Mm -hmm. And that's important for me yeah, because I know it's going somewhere. There's a direction and we're all there for a common purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's a safe place. Yeah, that's so true. I think that is probably one of the biggest pieces I think to starting and taking those baby steps is being willing to at least dive into a space where you can feel safe and know that there are some parameters around how things are managed. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you start to build rapport and relationship with other people um, that are within the space that are kind of navigating like you. And you said it's so powerful about being an introvert and having excellent social skills. Mm -hmm. So many times I feel like people lean on that and go, well, I'm an introvert, so count on me to be you know, the one who is socially uninterested. The one oh, <laughs> that's not introverted. The that's just rude. emotionally vacate. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, that's, that's, just that's not rude. introverted. That's just rude. Yeah, yeah, your mom didn't teach you manners. And that's different. You can be introverted and have social graces. You can be extroverted and be incredibly rude. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, there, but I feel like people lean on that, so I just wanted to tap that really quickly, mm -hmm. but it's so true. Yeah. But, we need you know, to get our definitions clear. You can get it clear. <laughs> and that excellent social skills is so important. I love how yeah. you said that because I think that's a big piece, too, around uh, sustaining community is having these social skills that allow you to sustain relationship. Mm -hmm. So we've got great girlfriends listening who are so hungry and thirsty for relationship, mm -hmm. but not really relational. And mm -hmm. I'd love if you can help a woman who's listening, learn how to be more relational in her community build. Mm, I love, I love that question. It's honestly honing your listening skills and your interest, your sincere interest in other people. Mm, yeah, yeah. 
because I've met a lot of women who talk about being lonely and not having friends, and they never ask me one single question about me. They talk a lot about themselves. Yeah. It's really hard to make friends when you're not interested in other people. (laughs) So I think that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Like, you know, and a lot of us are depressed because we're so absorbed Mm -hmm. with what's going on in our inner world. Yeah. And one of the the quickest and easiest ways to, to get out of that is to focus on someone else Mm -hmm. to ask Mm -hmm. someone how they're doing to realize that there are other problems in the world and also like when you realize that you have skills within you yeah that helps someone else Mm -hmm. it's um it's fulfilling because really you're just aligning with god's heart that is and and comforting someone else yeah 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 you're right when you start to think about well i start think about i'm putting it on you but when i start thinking about all the times that I was so self-absorbed. It was oftentimes I was focusing, meditating on problems that weren't even serving who I was, that I was just consumed by them. And yeah. then I was of no service to anyone, not mm-hmm. even myself. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I began to dive deeper into my servant's heart, like really in my relationship with God first, yeah. but then developing my, like in that love walk, developing my servant's heart that I understood that even in the midst of, of turmoil and pain and things, the best way to release all of that is mm-hmm. to be of service to someone else. Something I have is is advantageous to someone else. It doesn't matter how low I am. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter how bad things are. My quarter is 25 cents in someone else's pocket if I have a servant's heart, right? Yeah, and yeah. so I think part of creating community and cultivating a space where love can abound or where that kind of grace can abound is where you have a mindset to say, I'm here to serve. Mm-hmm. Like what happens when you came in the room you came in. This is a perfect example. Kristen Dalton Wolf is a perfect example. You came in the room and said, I want to serve the podcast. Mm-hmm. And so if you in in one thing, you optimize this moment to say it's bigger than just what happens here. It's about what will happen for all the ears to come, for all the viewers in the future, for any heart it might touch. Mm-hmm. And you thought about the long standing effect of service. And that's mm-hmm. what you poured into that prayer before we even got started. Mm-hmm. So you came in the room giving Aww. of yourself. And I think that is such a valuable piece of community building is really learning how to give of yourself and yeah. know that you're always going to get it back. Yeah. That's, I love that you're saying that. And it's making That's my observation of you. Well, thanks. <laughs> I, I, as you're saying that, I, I feel like I'm like, I don't feel like I give of myself. And so that's making me think, I think maybe another a helpful way to frame service or giving yeah. of self is it doesn't really feel like that when you're just operating in, in your identity yeah. and your calling yep. and that's going to feel natural and mm-hmm. flowy and yep. passionate and fun. Mm-hmm. Like it shouldn't mm-hmm. feel like I'm going to pour myself out today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. It shouldn't feel like that. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's really helpful that's to so just good. kind of be like, okay, well, what is my passion? Mm-hmm. What, uh, this is my favorite thing to do ever is to yeah. talk about God and how he transforms us and how we can like get free of our inner stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, those trappings tough. that make us sad and just are limiting. I'm like, yeah. how can we break free of those? Because I know what it's felt like to live under them. So it's mm-hmm. so fun to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand what people are going through a, because I've either been there or B because I have a lot of coaching clients who are there. So I'm yeah. Like, and I listen to a lot of podcasts and I get a lot of gold and Me wisdom too. from the podcast. <laughs> so I'm like, let's, let's bring it, you know, yes, yes. what healing can we bring someone today? How yeah. fun. So if someone else is like, okay, how do I give of myself in a way that it doesn't feel hard and like pouring out then, okay, find your passion, the passion. And that usually comes from, from where God healed you in pain. Oh my goodness. That's so good. It, there's an awakening that happens there. It's like when mm-hmm. you start to walk in that passion, things that you feel so good, so sure, so warm and enthusiastic about. Right. The world awakens to you in a different, mm. like in a different, it's like it all takes form in a different way. It's mm. just, I don't know. I feel like it's a five sensory experience. Mm. All of your senses come alive when you're walking in your passion. And I think that in that space, you're able to, really attract God's best and highest. I really do. I feel like he's like, all right, cool. Now you're moving, you know, it, it, my vibration and I can actually return to you things that are abundant for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always in the form of people. It's uh, for me. I'm like, it's always community. 
Wow. Like a person begats another person begats another person. Someone texted me and said, oh, you, you've got to know this lady, Kristen. When you get to L.A., look her up, check her out. It, it happens in that way. Like I feel like God's value to us is community and that the more that we pour passion into the people we love and we support and we serve and, and you know, give of ourselves, the more he blesses us with more people who are like-minded in whatever ways are necessary for our journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Are you seeing that in She Gathers? Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool, actually, uh, because we went – we, d- we went through a hiatus, uh-huh. you know, because of 2020, and then we relaunched in October. Oh, nice. And I was feeling really intimidated to relaunch. Like, people were asking me whether I was going to do it, and I wasn't sure because when we went on hiatus, I was burnt out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized that I was burnt out because I, w- I don't think people would know I was doing this, but I... I was operating from a place of people pleasing Mm -hmm. and I really wanted to make sure everyone else was happy with my performance. Ah. And that is so draining. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so now, and she gathers Mm -hmm. 2.0. Well, a, like it helped me to start off with a stripped down approach where I was like, all right, we're going to get rid of production. We're going to get rid of like all the bells and whistles and just let the meat be the meat, which Mm -hmm. is like, the word of God, yeah. the, the teaching, the, the med and I lead women through meditation. So come for that if you want, if not, yeah. okay. And because of that mentality, I just, it's like on another level now, mm. you know, because it's not about the production. That doesn't necessarily mean the production isn't going to come. Right. But it's like the mindset and the focus is on what it's supposed to be about. Yeah. Um, And because of that, I've seen like talent rise up. Like I have one girl, her name's Adrian. She's amazing. And she's like our new set designer. And she just did a whole step and repeat um, last week. And then the, the, and then last month and it was just gorgeous. So I'm seeing just, you know, women rise up who want to contribute their talents and their gifts in this ministry and their own specific and unique ways, which I love. Oh, that's so good. So instead of people coming for bells and whistles, they come for the meat. And then the, when the bells and whistles are there. It's cool. It's not like right. where's the lights? What happened to the you know? Yeah, but the then also, mindset. but then also, it, it flows from a place yeah. of like not striving or trying to impress, but out of a place of fun. Yeah, and that's yeah. and I'm having so much fun. I have no stress ah, at all. So good. So, yeah, I love that. I love that. All right. So, what would you leave on the table? To be a community builder when you think about it, because um, I know coming in, you were like, wait, community builder, me, yeah, you, <laughs> absolutely you, 10,000%. And I also want to touch really quickly on this, it because there is a piece of community building that happens in person and then online, um, whether we uh, intentionally have this or not, but online people commune around your profile, right? Mm-hmm. They come to your Instagram page and they start to connect with you and they feel like they know you. And they build relationship with you, not necessarily you with them, the other because you don't know them, right? But they with you, they become, you know, connected to you through mm-hmm. community. And so, do you feel any pressure to sustain a social presence that is communal for people hmm. Hmm. as a community builder? I'll just tell you, I did. So mm-hmm. when you said burnout, I was like, thank God we're shutting down the world for ten minutes oh, because I gosh. was overwhelmed with trying to be the best. Uh, community builder online and in person mm. that I could be. And I was like, Ugh, I was dying. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I need it. But, but listen, no, you may not, but I'm just curious. Do you ever have that, that pressure to sustain community on Instagram, you know, knowing that people are expecting to hear from you or see mm. you? No. <laughs> Good. Um, I, well, I, I do feel pressure, but not the pressure of like that. Um, I need to main, because I guess people don't, Come, I, I I don't know. Maybe I don't see myself as someone who builds community online. Mm, mm-hmm. Um. Uh. And then what, what you you asked me another question. No, follow up that. to that. That was good. Well, that, that was, was like no. Yeah. Did you feel? Do you feel any pressure to like sustain a, a persona or even to keep up? With oh, that you said to built? to basically. Oh, because you said um because people are expecting to hear yeah, from you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I don't know if people are expecting to hear from me. I think sometimes like I need, I really value when someone writes me and they're like, your videos, I listen to your videos every single night during a hard time and that got me through. Um, Because I'm like, really? Yeah. Because I didn't know if what I was putting out there really mattered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Because my engagement, let's just be real, has like, it's gone, it's had its ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. And when there isn't a lot of engagement, I don't really know if what I'm putting out matters. Right, right. And yeah. um, so I guess I'm a, a results-driven person. If I don't see the results, then I'm like, well, maybe it maybe I don't need to show up or maybe it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so I don't know if I feel pressure for those reasons, but I do know the importance of maintaining a presence online mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for, you know, your ministry goals and yeah. um, just being able to steward the things that God has been teaching me. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's a different pressure, which which gives you the ability to respond differently. Yeah. A, a lot of, a lot more ease. <laughs> yeah, I would say that. I mean, it eliminates we, the people part. It's we, more about the God side of things. It's true. Like we yeah. took a we took a three month break from social media, my husband and I. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when I came back on, I I came back on with a different approach, which was more let's just like just have I just had more of like a trial and error like mm -hmm. practice and play yeah. practice yeah. and play approach that's what it is it's like before I was posting something and I'm, I would put, put so much time into it and it had to be perfect and like exactly what the people wanted to hear and now it's like this would be fun to do today let's see how it lands yeah and if it doesn't land well then cool I'll just hide the likes or archive it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the end you know yeah, yeah so yeah. there's a little bit of like just a, more of a freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Where can our great girlfriends keep up with you, Kristen? Really the best place is Instagram at Kristen J. Dalton. Uh -huh. And then if they like what they heard and they're like, ooh, I want to go deeper with her, then yeah. I do personal coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh -huh. um, so my website, KristenDaltonWolf.com. Oh, awesome. You yeah. are so amazing. So it was so wonderful to have you oh, on. Thank you for having me. Oh, there's so much to take from this episode, Great Girlfriends. And I hope that um, as you have listened or have watched that you are thinking about all the different ways that you're currently framing community or in the middle of community. Maybe you need to learn to celebrate the community that you're in and, and learn to say, hey, what more can come from this group of two or three friends that are together? Like, what more can we do if we're more intentional about how we build? Um, and then how can you be one of the people that is a door opener for another woman in their life. So as you think about how you serve the world with your passion, how does that contribution make the difference to someone else? And hopefully with those, those uh, key food, key questions or uh, that food for thought, it'll give you a gateway into ways that you can dive deeper into your local or your online community. I'm super happy for you and so grateful that you were able to be on today. Thanks for having Everything me. you shared. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Great girlfriends, have a wonderful Wednesday. Do share this episode with your friends and thank you for listening. Peace. Peace.